Good morning. Is this great or what? <laughs> I have been so looking forward to uh, to this. And it's great to see everybody. Thanks for coming out uh, for our service today. We are still uh, providing live feeds and uh, for our folks at home and also uh, recorded services on our YouTube and, uh, and Facebook page. So um, we're now, can you hear it or not? No? Nope. Let me I'll turn it up some then. Good. See, I didn't have to worry about that kind of feedback before. <laughs> Is that any better? Okay, good. No. <laughs> Keep it down over there. <laughs> so, um, what we want to do is, uh, Tim, this is Tim Johnson, our videographer, and he is going to pan the congregation right now and let folks at home see who's uh, gathered with us. Everybody wave. <laughs> virtually as well. Um, I want to say thank you to uh, again to our session who has <laughs> been so careful and been so uh, forthright in helping us prepare for this and and uh, do what we can do. Um, also for our volunteers today especially uh, Debbie and Yana and uh, Marilyn and Judy helping us out a bit and uh, so uh, we appreciate uh, all of that. Um, Emily Ballou has provided us with the succulents that you see on the tables and with the plants that we have back here. Um, they're not getting in flowers right now, but she brought these out of her own collection uh, just to uh, bless us uh, with these beautiful uh, flowers and plants uh, for our service today. I um, also am grateful to, uh, to Andrew Malloy, uh, who's with us, uh, to provide a uh, prelude this morning. He has a thing on his puppet that prevents it from spewing, <laughs> okay? So don't worry, um, but we always appreciate Andrew uh, playing for us. Um, so um, let's get started, shall we? So, <laughs> our gathering words today are from Tagore, 
And uh, if you don't know uh, who that is, I would encourage you to, to Google when you get home. <laughs> Amazing figure uh, from India and um, a wonderful poet and writer uh, as well. So, uh, Tagore was especially fond of uh, nature. And in fact, uh, the university classes he taught, he taught outside. Um, so a lot of his poetry is about uh, the natural world. <clears throat> On great souls, fly the banner to conquer the deserts. On the tender, oh, the tender soul, bless every speck of dust on this earth with great piety. Let the ever silent soil sing the song of your glory, O oh, beautiful soul, encompassed with flowers and greeneries. O oh, my traveler friend, come for a rest under the shadow of trees. Come, playmaker of winds, and be fascinated by the blue sky. In the dawn, aspire hope on the woods, and in the dusk, bless them with deep, dark tones. O oh, great mind, sing the tune of a peaceful corner of this earth. So I invite you to join with me in our call to worship, which is from Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, for you are with me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord of life, O beautiful soul, O great mind, as we dwell in your house, as we dwell with one another, we dwell with you. May we be renewed in our sense of your presence in this place, <coughs> among these people, and in all creation. Spirit of Christ, amen. So our gathering music is Bless the Lord. I think most of you are at least a little familiar with this. Uh, Bob will play it through, and we're invited to sing it three times. <laughs>
So I did not put a word with the children in the bulletin uh, because we're having Sunday school downstairs and we're not doing the routine of them up here first, but it occurred to me that there may still be children at home uh, who are, <laughs> are watching. So I will do a, a brief word for our children. Uh, so if you have children at home um, and you're viewing this, or if you're viewing this later, have, gather them around and uh, let me share just a little word with, uh, with our children. So our reading from the Bible today was about the Good Shepherd, uh, who is Jesus. And uh, I'm going to read this little bit of a story uh, to you, uh, accompanied uh, by Lammy, uh, my lamb friend, okay? <laughs> so here's the story. Jesus uh, wanted people to know that he would always love them and take care of them. He called himself the Good Shepherd, and he told people that they were like sheep. And some people didn't understand, so Jesus told them this story. The little lamb was lost. Bah! <laughs> bah, said the little lamb. Bah! The sun slowly slid out of sight, and the little lamb shivered in the cold night air. Bah! He smelled danger. Uh, nearby, a hungry wolf was behind a thorny bush. Bah! cried the little lamb. Uh, he was getting more and more afraid. And down in the valley, a shepherd guarded his flock of sheep, watching and listening. And the animals slept peacefully in the cool green grass. A small stream delicately danced in the evening breeze. A gust of wind swept across the valley, and the shepherd paused. Bah, he heard in the distance. Bah, he knew the voice of his little lamb. Even though it was dark, the shepherd started up the rocky uh, hill and uh, that led toward the lost lamb. Don't be afraid, the shepherd called out. I will find you. I will keep you safe. The little lamb heard the shepherd's voice. Slowly he stumbled down the path. A branch scra scraped his leg. Bah, he cried. The little lamb was scared. He waited for the shepherd to find him. Bah, bah. And when the shepherd reached the lamb, he gently picked him up and held him close. Uh, he says, there you are, said the shepherd. I have found you. I will carry you home. And after he told this story, Jesus said, you see, I am a shepherd too. Just like the good shepherd cares for each and every sheep in the flock, I care for each and every one of you. What do you think? Uh, it's happy by now. So. <laughs> All right, if you are at home, kiddos, we're going to pass a piece. And when I shake my stole... Um, you say, let the peace of Christ be with you. I'm trying to remember what the words are. Oh, well, we've been doing it anyway. Don't we? <laughs> so let the peace of Christ fill your hearts. Uh, to this peace we're called as a single creation welcoming of all. Let the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Thank you. So I invite you, I've lost a page or something. One fall. Okay, so um, here we go. All right, I think we're, we're ready. So um, I invite you to exchange glances and waves of peace <laughs> to one another. <laughs> That's what I said. Good. We will have fellowship outside after the service, so uh, we'll have time and space to be able to, to do you're such a social crowd, so you know, I don't want to deprive you. Um, so we do have some special music uh, by Bob. <laughs>
Keeps them just offered us some beautiful, beautiful music. So thank you, Bob. Yeah. So in uh, in Buddhism, uh, there is something called the three refuges, and they are the Buddha, uh, the Dharma, which is the teaching or the practice, and then the Sangha, which is the community. And um, I think that's very similar um, to the refuges that we have uh, in Christianity as well. For us, it's the Christ, uh, the gospel, or the teaching and practice, and the church, right? Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about all of these and fi finish up with talking about the church, of course, um, on a day like today. So uh, the Buddha. <clears throat> That, for Buddhists, is not just a belief in the Buddha or an experience necessarily of the Buddha himself, but it, it's to experience um, what the Buddha experienced. And ultimately that's uh, called enlightenment. But enlightenment is both a deep experience of one's embodiment and enearthment, our life, in the realities of this physical existence, um, but it's also... Uh, an experience of the transcendent consciousness, uh, a different way to think about the world and our place uh, in the world. Um, similarly, I think, um, the Christ, for us, is not just uh, an experience of the Christ, but I think it really is intended to be an experience of what Jesus experienced. And what was that? Uh, Jesus experienced the divine life and consciousness incarnate in and through his own life, through the flesh and blood experience of, in this material, finite, and transient world. And that's why we don't just refer to Christ, we refer to Jesus Christ, <laughs> because here is that genuine human being uh, filled with the presence of God. And the way that that's said in our passage, our reading this morning, is simply... As the Father knows me, and I know uh, the Father. So if you heard my Easter sermon, you know that I talked about Mary Magdalene at the tomb of Jesus and her recognition that comes when he calls her by her name. The one who knows her completely, loves her without limit, and calls her name. You know, this Christian way is not just about professing faith in Christ. It is about an experience of that knowing and loving one uh, wherein and within whom we recognize our truest self. So the Dharma, the teaching, is not really about a set of beliefs, <laughs> but a long reflection on the experience of the Buddha in Buddhism and on the path toward and practice uh, of that experience. And so enlightenment is never just about an individual experience or transformation. It's about a compassion that seeks to liberate all from their suffering. And that's what it means to live and practice the Dharma in that tradition. Well, what we have is the gospel, <laughs> which is good news. Uh, that's what the word means. We can also call it the way. And again, it's not just a set of beliefs. That's not what it's about. But it is a way and a practice of life. And I believe that it was never really about individual salvation. It's about the hope of liberation for all, in fact. I know my own, and my own know me. But he also says in this passage about the Good Shepherd, the wide, larger reading, and about the sheepfold, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. You know, the voice that calls may have many names, or no name at all. For this greater reality of our existence is ever calling us to recognize and realize our participation and partnership in that greater reality to open us to that possibility and recognize that we are in fact part and parcel of that. Um, that greater reality in the whole, in the one, in the all. 
And so does so the Sangha, the community. And in our tradition, we call it church. Um, ecclesia was the original word, which means the assembly or the gathered, the gathered ones. So what is it that we gather around uh, when we come together? Now, this long season of not gathering <laughs> has caused me to question why we gather. And it's not just me. <laughs> you know, a, a lot of folks are wondering about this. Um, the way the church has deported itself <laughs> sometimes lately um, has moved many to question, will the church survive? Or more to the point, should the church uh, survive uh, if this is what church is? I've read article after article over the last months about why people are leaving the church and leaving in groves, and especially young people. And from eight, eight to 10,000 churches close every single year, that's what's happening across our country. Is the church worth saving? I believe that it is, because I, um, I, I think that this is a tremendous, tremendously powerful witness and influence in our larger world as well as what it does to build uh, each one of us up. So I'm concerned about that. Um, so what is it that we, um, that we gather around, or should gather around? Um, what and who are we in our gathering uh, together? Is this an exclusive uh, community of the saved, <laughs> of those whom God favors, uh, those fortunate and Perhaps a foreordained few um, who will spend, get to spend eternity with him. Is that, that, is that who, what we gather around? Is that our identity? Um, do we gather around a correct or perhaps even infallible doctrinal claim, a literalized scripture and a legalized creed? Is that what holds us together? Is that our bond? Is that what we have in common? Um, do we gather around a common identity based on a privileged race or gender or culture or sexual orientation or history or lifestyle or nation? Is that the common uh, thing or theme or hope or whatever that we gather around? Is this the community of the pure and the pious? I'm looking out, obviously not, but... Uh, <laughs> the pure and the pious, because that's the way some people view religious community, conserving the morals of some idealized past, some code of eternalized and individualized norms uh, for all time. I saw a, a picture of a church sign uh, online the other day. It said, all are welcome, big letters at the top, and underneath it said, except... Uh, tobacco chewers, people with tattoos, beer drinkers, homosexuals, divorcees, blended families, homeless people. You could add a, <laughs> you could all add to the list, right? All welcome. It's up, not, eh. And it's mostly, again, focused on the indivi these individual kind of uh, moral codes rather than looking at the larger questions of our society and, and suffering uh, in our society. Uh, so who are we? Um, what are we doing? Why are we here? Um, what do we gather around? Well, I think the simplest, quick, excuse me, the simplest answer to that is we, we gather around Jesus, and I'm okay with that. <laughs> we gather around Jesus as long as it is Jesus the Good Shepherd and not Jesus as some kind of idolized, um, only uh, Son of God. Jesus the Good Shepherd who shows us the way. Jesus who reveals the face of God in the face of a genuine human being. For me, Jesus of Nazareth, bearer and revealer of the Christ, is an exquisite personification of that divine life showing up within and as creation. And so he reveals that presence that's in all of us and all creation. And so I believe that Christianity is a profoundly spiritual path. Um, it really is, um, if we allow it to be. Uh, but we can miss all of that if we think that it is, this is the only way to God, or the only way to heaven, or the only way 
to uh, to find truth and to uh, to practice it. I trust this gospel, this way, uh, through and in Jesus. Our profession, profession then is to live that way for the liberation of all. And so we gather that we might attend and encourage each other along the way. There's an African proverb that says, uh, why do gazelles travel in pairs? And the answer is so that they can blow the dust out of one another's eyes along the way. We are here to provide refuge to one another and also, also to extend refuge, to extend that care and that compassion to our neighbors and to the world. And so let us gather. So, come to the time for our prayer, and I invite any of you who have a prayer request um, to state your prayer request. Yeah, Judy. Um, Judy? First, a praise for you and Debbie in the session for this past year has been so difficult and emotional, but you guys have really been smart and thoughtful mm -hmm. and leading in the right direction and the right timing, so thank you for that. Great. And then I do have a concern. Um, Dawson? Julia, J-U-L-I-A, he's the brother um, of Travis and Gen 9 and Julia, who's in a very serious moped accident, and he may still be in an induced coma. I haven't really gone back to look at this. It's a go Motorcycle me. accident? Yeah. It's a moped. Moped. Yeah. Moped. And, uh, and he's from Maine, the state of Maine, but uh, it's a go me if you want to know more about it or help out. He's uh, okay. in very serious condition. Anyone else? All right. So I didn't get a list from the women's prayer group this week, but um, we probably the things that we've already been talking about. Sorry about that. That's fine. No, 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 no problem. Yeah, I, would, I wanted to call you out, Jim. <laughs> okay, let us let us pray. O oh, gracious God, hear our prayers today for those we have mentioned in community here and for those others that we also know about and uh, our heart uh, goes out to. Be with all those who mourn, with all those who cry out in anguish, with all those who fall silent in despair. And bless the whole earth in all its diversity and protect it and the life that you have called forth from it. Teach us to live as you have dreamed we might and so to fulfill the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And I invite you, too, to pray our offering prayer uh, together. Uh, the offering bowl is in the, uh, <laughs> in the narthex. And um, there's also some information there about how you can uh, donate online uh, on our Tithely app. Um, it's real easy to do, so if you want that information, it's there. And just thank you for your generosity through this period of time, um, helping to support our church and make sure that we have uh, what we need to continue on to be able to arrive at this day, <laughs> this, this glorious day. Uh, so thank you for your faithfulness uh, to our congregation. So let us pray together. Divine love flowing through me blesses and increases all that I give and all that I receive. Amen. And Bob, play us uh, some doxology.
were singing the doxology. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice, I didn't want to stop it. <laughs>
a reality that we are all part of. And so may we know the joy of uh, living our lives uh, in that presence and in that grace. Uh, God bless you. Uh, let us go.